Hey folks, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about how to create spot colors from raster files in Adobe Photoshop and also using a little bit of Illustrator and Design as well. Uh, before I get started with today's video, I do want to announce that I recently created a Patreon page. I'm hoping to build up a community over there with the hopes of generating more content. I'll leave a link down in the description of this video. I do have both a free and a paid membership tier. The, pay, the, uh, member, the paid membership tier is going to include some bonus content, like some additional little videos. It's also going to hopefully have some uh, downloads of some of the files that I've been using for some of the videos that I've been creating in the past, such as like the proof sheets or um, some of the uh, Adobe Acrobat pre-flight profiles. I'm going to upload those so that uh, all members will have access to that. So if you want to support my work here, help grow the channel a little bit, please click on the link, sign up. I'd appreciate it very much. Okay, so spot colors for rasterized images. Uh, a couple different ways to do it. First one I'm going to talk about here is this um, like sunset photo. Let's say that we're going to take this and we're going to print this on an offset press. And instead of just creating a boring old grayscale image, we want to give it a little bit more depth. So we're going to use a couple different um, PMS colors. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open this up in Photoshop. And I'm going to go up to Image Mode. And I'm going to change this to grayscale. And I'm going to hit disc Discard. So now this is a 100% grayscale image. And if you were using a one color, uh, this was a one color offset job, for instance, you could go ahead and just save this and then plop it into your InDesign or Illustrator layout and then make your printing plate from there and then you would have either a grayscale or you'd have a grayscale image that would come out with whatever PMS color you were printing on your uh, offset press whether it be black or whether it be a specific color like 185 red whatever the case may be but let's say that we're printing a two color job so not only do I want to utilize the black uh, uh, channel, but I also want to utilize whatever the second color that I'm using. So what you want to do is you want to go up to image mode and we're going to change this to a duotone image. And here's where you're going to set the two basic, the two colors for this image. And so you could do a monotone, which would just give you the black Duotone obviously gives you two different colors to choose from. Tritone or Quadtone will add additional colors to this image. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow part of this image to appear on multiple printing plates so that it kind of gives the image a little bit more depth to it. So let's just say uh, we're going to use some kind of purple color. I don't have the specific Pantone color here but let's just say it's some purple Pantone color. I click on the uh, box here and I can set the color even though it um, it says purple I can set it to whatever I want. I can set it to red or I can set it to green. It doesn't really matter too much unless you're going to be sending that as a proof out to a customer then obviously you want to try to get as close as possible and if you know what the Pantone color is you can set the CMYK, the RGB, or the hex color here. Um, so you try to get a little bit more accurate representation of the color that you're actually going to be using on your offset press. But in this case, I'll just hit cancel and I'll go back here and we have this purple here and this black. You can also change the curves to the, to the image so that you can kind of have, I want more purple in here, I want uh, less purple, uh, same thing with the black here. I can change it. Say I want my image to be darker. Obviously, it's too dark. Or I can be lighter, have more purple, less black. That's kind of an artistic touch to it. So you can do it however you want. I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, but in this case, I'll just leave the curves basically just as a straight line. So this is all set up, ready to go. I hit OK, and I'm going to go back up here to File, Save As and leave this as a Photoshop file and I'll just label it as spot color. Hit save and now I'm done here in Photoshop. If I go into InDesign here I have a little um, layout that I 
have already started with a little bit of text and I'll just place that Photoshop file in here Let me center it up and shrink it so that we can see what we're working with here and so now you can see in my uh, swatches uh, uh, palette here this purple color shows up as one of my swatches because it recognizes it from the Photoshop file and if I go into my separations preview and I turn my separations on you can see if I turn everything off except for purple color here and black those are the two colors that make up this image and if I turn those off I turn my CMYK on the image obviously disappears so I turn that back off so now when I set this to um, uh, output my printing plates, this will give this image a little bit more depth to it when it's actually printed on the offset press. So that's way number one. Delete that. Come back in here and I have this JPEG image. And basically what we want to do is we're going to change and create spot colors for these uh, purple areas here. The, bluish purple area and then these teal areas so I'm going to open that up in Photoshop and I have my channels open already but if you don't you can go up to window channels oops now that I made it go away windows channels there we go and so by default most images will open you'll see that your layers are here and channels um, are next to it or if it isn't there like I said you can go up to Windows channels and this shows this is a CMYK image you have your cyan magenta yellow and black and if I click on those individually you can see the colors disappearing and so now basically what we want to do is we want to change this from a CMYK image over to two spot PMS colors um, so what we need to do is with the CMYK channel selected I'm gonna go up to the top and go to select and I'm going to go to color range and here is where I want to select just these different areas here we'll start with the blue area here so if I click this and you can see here there's lots of other areas that are also showing up and I don't want those so my fuzziness is set all the way as high as it'll go and if I turn it down a little bit I can also add to this selection if I hold the shift key so if I if I hold basically the shift key everywhere it'll select the entire thing which is what I don't want you go back in here and so if I click here and I also want my company name here so I have both of these items selected together and I'm going to put the fuzziness down so I don't have these teal areas selected along with it Again, you may, depending on what your image looks like, you may have to play around with this fuzziness a little bit, either go all the way up or all the way down. But whenever you're satisfied with the selection itself, go ahead and hit OK. You can see the little dancing ants are around the areas that are selected now. So I'm going to go back into my channels, and I'm going to go to click the little flyout menu here, and I'm going to click New Spot Channel. And here is where you're going to give your spot color a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it blue color. And I'm going to change the color itself to a nice blue here. I'll hit OK. Again, if you know your um, CMYK, CMYK values that are closer, a closer representation to the actual PMS color that you're going to be using on press, then you can go ahead and set those in there. But for this case, I'm just going to kind of just make something up. So I have it here. I'm going to click OK. And now if I turn my CMYK off, you can see I'm left with just this selection here, which is my actual blue color. And so now we're going to repeat the same steps here to uh, do the teal. So I'm going to click my CMYK, click Color Range. And then I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to select just this area. I'm going to turn the fuzziness down a little bit so that I don't accidentally select the other areas. And then I'm going to click OK. My dancing ants are around just the teal areas that I want. Now I'm going to go back over here and go to New Spot Channel. And here's where I'm going to call it Teal Color. Change my 
color itself to a nice little teal here and I'll click OK. Oops, OK, and then I'll click OK. And once again, if I turn the CMYK values off, I'm left with just this blue color and teal color. So this is a more accurate representation of how it might look on press if you set your actual colors to the, the correct PMS colors from the uh, Pantone book. And if I click on these individually, you can see those are what are going to print on my offset press. So it uh, looks like this got a little bit of artifact in there, but um, that should be okay. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go up to File, Save As, and leave this as a Photoshop file, and I'll just call this one Spot Color as well. And save, and then we're done here. And same thing as before, we're just gonna go back into InDesign here, and I'm going to drop this in. Shrink it down a little bit. Then if I go into my Separations Preview, and turn my separations on you can see now there's two additional colors in my separations obviously the purple is still there left from before but if I turn my CMYK values off this shows the two spot colors and see so you can still see the original CMYK values of the image are here but now we have the additional two spot channels so when we go to make our printing plates, we can choose just the ones that we want um, when we send that over to our, uh, our plate maker. Okay, so that's way number two. Last way is to create a TIFF image. And I'll show you real quickly. We have this little logo here. We're gonna open this up in Photoshop. PNG file and the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to image mode and I'm going to grayscale it out discard the color information and that's all I need to do basically I'm going to set the color that I want in Adobe InDesign instead of uh, Photoshop so from here I just need to go file save as and I'm going to save this as a TIFF. You could do it as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, I'll just save it as a TIFF. Hit save. Hit OK. And then we're done here. Go back into InDesign. And I'm going to drop in my TIFF file here. Shrink it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my swatches panel here and there's kind of there's two states to this and this is the same for both Illustrator and InDesign so if I click on the image here using my regular selection tool and I click let's say I'm going to make it the same color as this hello world here which is this Pantone 185 if I click this it's going to create the whole box as 185 and that's not what I want I want just the the actual image here inside so I'll undo that and what I want to use is the direct selection tool so if I use the direct selection tool it's going to select the actual image inside of this box and here if I click on 185 it'll actually apply it and I could if I wanted to I could select the purple color from earlier the blue the teal any of these other color uh, swatches in my swatches palette and if I go into my separations preview and turn that back on and here's my 185 red if I have that just selected you'll see both the hello world and the actual leaf logo itself are set to that 185 red so there's a couple different ways to do it obviously this is not going to be important if you're going to be printing in four color process. You just want to leave your image set to the original specifications and send it over to your printer. But if you're going to be printing on an offset press and you need to set a JPEG image or a PNG file or any kind of raster file, those are a few different ways that you can set it to a spot color so that you can output your printing plates properly for your press operator. Uh, I hope this was enlightening for some of those out, out there that might have uh, run into this problem in the past. 
If you have any questions about the whole process, if you want to know anything further, please leave them down in the comments below. Or like I said, check out the Patreon page and uh, ask questions there and start a little discussion. So hopefully uh, I'll see you over on the Patreon area. If not, I'll catch you on the next video and I hope everyone has a good day. Take care. Bye.